So let's say you're at a stage now where you're happy with your diffuse textures, you've added in all those layers, you've added in your dirt, your rust, you've painted in the wear and tear, you're ready to move on to the next level. And if we just switch back to Maya briefly, looking at the model as it is, yep, it looks okay, but it still looks a little flat. The uh, Even though we've got these areas which are painted in, which are which is supposed to indicate that it's been worn away, it still almost looks like it's been painted in. So what we can do now is take our diffuse map and from that generate a specular map which will dictate which areas are shiny and which areas are matte. So in this example, these areas that are worn away will be a lot shinier than the actual painted areas of the loader. So again, that'll just make those shinier and more reflective and look more like the steel underneath. And on top of that we can generate a bump map which is just going to give some surface relief. So again these areas that are worn away will be pushed into the surface of the model and also these recesses which we created earlier we can push those into the surface of the model as well which will just enhance sort of those panels er paneling areas. We can also use a bump map if we want to give some relief to the dirt. So if you've got mud or something on your the surface of your model, the bump map will just help make it look like that is sat on top of the model rather than just painted on top of it. So let's just switch back to Photoshop. So you have your Photoshop file all nicely layered up like it is here. We've got our details, dirt, damage, just as we were painting it before. So let's create a bump map. So what I like to do first is just create a new layer and let's just fill that with 50% grey like so. Now because we're using a bump map and not a normal map the 50% grey sort of is the level that the model is at now, it's sort of the surface level and what we're going to do is build onto this um, lighter areas and darker areas so black areas tend to get recessed into the model whereas white areas is pushed out of the model. You'll see as we start building this up just how it's going to work. So let's just work our way through through these and see what we need. So obviously we need our recess layer so we're just going to create a copy, move this up here like so, make sure that's at normal, set that to 100%. Now we know we want this to be pushed into the model so we can leave that as black and that is absolutely fine. Uh, the red dot, we could copy that as well but this time let's just desaturate that and we'll just brighten that up so it's white. Again the black is going to be pushed into the model, white is going to be pushed out of the model, pulled out of the model so to speak. So these will be marking out the panels, the white dot will be pushed out. The decals, let's just copy that, move it up above our map like so. Now a, a bump map needs to be grayscale, so we need to get rid of these colours. So let's just desaturate that first. And then let's just flatten this out. So brightness contrast, brightness right up, contrast right up. And that's just going to make those white. We maybe need to adjust that again. Oh no, actually, those spots are where we added the wear and tear. Duh. All right. So now at the moment, these are just going to be pushed out of the model as well as the light there. So because they're bright white, they're going to be pushed out. Obviously, it's not going to deform the model. This is just surface detail. But we don't want it to come out as much as that, so maybe we just want it to be 10%. So it's just going to give a very slight relief. So it looks like these are stickers stuck onto the top of the model. We could just go through and do this for each layer. Think about what we need, like our dirt layer here. Now at the moment the dirt is black, so it's going to be pushed into the model. We want it to be sort of act as a relief so it comes off the surface of the model. So this time we're just going to 
invert this like so and rather than use a multiply we'll use screen and that's just going to made, made that white so again that is just going to sit on the surface of the model now rather than being pushed into it and again maybe that white is too severe so we'll just drop that down maybe 20 percent so I'll just skip ahead to the damage now we've got our wear and tear here which we've painted in we'll pull that up and here we can see what we've done now we don't need the inner glow so we'll get rid of that now the outer glow so we've got to think about this now we want this to sit in be pushed into the model because it's the paint that's been chipped away so what we could do is just rasterize the layer style so that's going to bake that into there just go back to our brightness and contrast like so now that's white so that's going to be coming out of the model so let's just invert that to black and obviously we don't want it to be chiseled all the way in so now we can just adjust the opacity again so maybe we just want a little surface relief because obviously paint isn't really thick so that is just quickly generating a bump map so if I just load in one that I've worked on previously just drag this into here so as you can see it's not much different to what we've got there I've probably added in an extra bit from the rust layer but that is pretty much the bump map we're working to so what I also like to do is when I'm happy with those layers we just put them in another group new group from layers call it bump and there we've got our bump map ready to do what we like with that's just changed colour because we have this hue saturation here which was only affecting the wear and tear um, all you do is if you quickly if you uh, if you create an adjustment layer like so and you only want it to affect the layer underneath it hold down alt hover over the uh, the area in between and just link it like so that just broke the link when we duplicated that layer that's all so don't worry about that if that happens to you all you need to do is just relink it just so that it only affects the layer below